Well, here we are at lesson one. Before we jump right into the course, I'd like to tell you how we'll approach each lesson. First, you'll see the lesson title slide, which will be followed by the lesson objectives. I'll go over those with you to give you an idea where, where we will be heading in the lesson. If these objectives don't make much sense to you, of course, that's okay. I'd just like for you to have a little bit of a road map before we set out. Also, you'll find, for the most part, that I'll be reading from the text as we go along. At various points, I will add comments and anecdotes to make things easier to understand. I encourage you to follow along in your book as we move through the lesson. As we get to the end of the lesson, there will be a lesson review slide, where we'll discuss what we learned in the lesson. At that point, you will be directed to the practice pages which accompany the lesson. If you feel you're not ready to start the practice pages, I encourage you to watch the video segment of the lesson again, and then you can start the practice pages. Once you've completed the practice pages and had your work checked by your teacher, you will be given a lesson test. Once that has been satisfactorily completed, you can begin the next lesson. Open your book now to lesson one and we'll begin. Lesson one. Meet chemistry. The objectives for lesson one are to introduce the definition of chemistry and introduce the elements. When you meet someone for the first time, you like to know that person's name and something about him or her. Since we are getting acquainted with chemistry, let's get to know the subject a little better by learning where the word chemistry originated. In about 100 AD, Greek scientists were very busy studying scientific processes in a an attempt to change non-valuable elements into more valuable elements such as gold. The Greeks thought elements naturally transmutated into gold in the earth and these scientists wanted to learn these transmutation processes and be able to repeat them in the lab. These theories of turning simpler, more common elements into gold, which is known as alchemy, were also taking place in China and other locations. The popularity of the idea rose and declined over several hundred years, and although it eventually was found to be impossible, many, many ideas and processes were discovered about the nature of the Earth's elements. It is from the term alchemy that our present-day term of chemistry is derived. It is generally taught that chemistry is the study of matter and the way various kinds of matter react with each other. Matter is defined as any substance, whether it be solid, liquid, or gas. And that is basically what chemistry is all about. Now you might say, sure, that definition sounds so simple and easy to understand, but what about all those neutrons and isotopes and all those symbols and foreign looking codes for matter? We have to admit there's almost another language you will begin to learn as you study chemistry. With this book, you will learn a great deal about matter and the way different types of matter react with each other, as well as the words and symbols used to describe those substances and their reactions. As you continue through this book, you will be introduced to new terms and symbols that will soon become second nature. Expect to find yourself using more and more of the terms we discuss. So for now, let's just stick with our simple definition of chemistry, the study of matter and how various kinds of matter react with each other. When we speak of matter, especially in the context of learning chemistry, visions of bottles containing strange smelling crystals and colored liquids may come to mind. However, the matter we are referring to is everywhere around you. Your notebook, your pencil, you, your room, your house, your food, and the very vital substance required by all living things which is water, are kinds of matter that we can study in the context of chemistry. Chemistry is not reserved only for the study of those odd smelling crystals and liquids. Chemistry can be applied to any object around you. The wood in your house can be analyzed and found to be composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The hamburger you enjoy is also made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with some added nitrogen. And as we have already said, the water that you drink and wash with, which is made of hydrogen and oxygen, is one of the most down-to-earth kinds of matter that we could discuss. 
So if your vision of chemistry was bubbling liquids and corkscrew-shaped tubes being monitored by people wearing goggles and white coats, alter it slightly to include almost everything around you. Did you camp catch some scientific language in the preceding paragraph, which was hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen? Those are the name of elements. Ancient chemists began to understand that there were certain kinds of existing matter that could not be broken down into simpler forms of matter. These forms of matter that could not be separated by one means or another were given the name elements, indicating that they were elemental or elementary, or the basis for all that follows, as in elementary school. Combined elements are what make up matter. Examples of elements that you are probably familiar with are hydrogen, oxygen, lead, and gold. There are more than 100 known elements today. The actual number is difficult to say since new elements are being discovered or synthesized as you read this. Look at the chart of the list of currently known elements. Note that 92 of those elements are considered to be naturally occurring elements, that is, to occur on Earth, not having been made by man. Note that the rest are considered, considered not to be naturally occurring, since these elements have been made by scientists. The history of naming elements is very interesting and a study unto itself. Some names and symbols may appear to be strange and obscure. You will find in the examples we use to illustrate concepts that many of the same elements are mentioned over and over again. You will pick up names and symbols of the more common elements as we go along. Look now at the periodic table of elements. Look first at the key which shows the information found in each square of the table. Note how the element symbol consists of one to three letters and that the first letter is always an uppercase letter. If there is more than one letter for a symbol, the second and third letters are always lowercase letters. Observe the numbers found in each square. Note how the atomic number is always a whole number and the atomic mass number is not a whole number. We will learn much more about these numbers later in the course. Let's review what we've discussed so far. We first stated that chemistry is the study of matter and how various kinds of matter react with each other. Second, everything around us is composed of matter and the study of matter could be applied to all things. Finally, we'll learn that some matter cannot be broken down into simpler forms of matter and is designated as an element. Practice what you've learned now in Lesson 1 by turning to the practice pages at the end of Lesson 1 found in your student textbook.